than this. Yeah. Yeah, I would too. Like, so, so my head on this is this is just another example of things spiraling out of control. And it's just one of the times that they were successful in assassinating John Connor, which led to another alternate timeline. But because things are still going back and forth in time, like it's to me, this doesn't negate any of the other ones. It's just another alternate time war that's going on. So I don't know, like I've still got my other movies to go back to at any time. And I will grab any one of them before I grab this one here. So, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so I will end on a positive note. I really liked the Terminator vision for the T-800 in this film. It was mm-hmm. exactly the way it looked in Terminator 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. In Terminator 3, I know it was a T-850, okay? But <laughs> but it was all updated because it's the 2000s now. But this was mm-hmm. the more, like, kind of analog technology uh, I, it was exactly the way it looked in the first two films, and I, and I appreciate that attention to detail. And it's funny how they can get stuff like that so right, but so many other things so wrong. Yeah. And then I'll finish on a down note. Um, so the the opening sequence that led into the first battle sequence, everything happened too quickly for me. You know, like, in the other Terminator movies, it felt like there was more of a build-up in story before we got the first action sequence. Oh, you're talking about the one at the automobile factory. Yeah. Yeah. It happened really, really quickly in the story, and it was just a little too quickly for me. So, Brandon, as we wrap up here, I need to ask you, our Terminator impersonator count for Terminator Dark Fate, can you tell me how many times the Terminator impersonates someone in this film? Well, I can only remember one, and that's when they impersonate the dad. Um, give me a second here to see if there was any more. You saw it twice, so you'd know more than I. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think there's just the one. Am I wrong? No, you're correct. It's only the as far as my okay. memory goes, if memory serves. Uh, mm-hmm. The only time the Rev-9 impersonates anyone is Danny's dad in the factory. Which, which by the way, did he materialize a gun? Didn't he have... did. Yeah, which I thought was cool, okay, because the T-1000 can't do that. All right, but does he do that at all during the rest of the film? Mm, no. No. <laughs> and also, you know, something I something I really thought was a missed opportunity in all of these films, if you, ha- if you have a shape-shifting Terminator, why don't they shape-shift into the good Terminator, right, or the Protector to confuse the heroes at some point, right? Like This franchise sucks. <laughs> Just say it. So, yeah. So, anyway... <laughs> There's our one Terminator impersonator. Bring us to a grand total, a final total of 13 okay. over the course of the franchise. So, Brandon, how many time displacement units out of five would you give Terminator Dark Fate? So, I had a really tough time rating this movie, you know, and I think I'm going to adjust my rating from what I gave it, and I'm going to adjust it down after our conversation. Well, my work, that my some... work here is done, my friends. <laughs> here is done. <laughs> So, uh, I gave it, I'm like, I didn't want to because I was so looking forward to this movie. I'm like, I don't want to give this a three. So I gave it a three and a half. Cause like, again, it, I did enjoy it, but talking about these problems that I have have really brought my rating down that I, I think I might even drop this thing a full star to two and a half. So like, I just, I, I don't know. Like, people could say what they want. I don't know if they will. I don't know how... Like, I don't have a problem with women leading my movies. I really don't. I just... I don't understand why they made the choices they did with these women. Sarah Connor was wonderful in this. Mm -hmm. But that line she said threw me off because it's not her. I didn't buy it. But I loved, loved, loved seeing Linda Hamilton in this role. And I just... I just wish it was better written. I'm so happy to see her back. You know, we just I just tweeted the other day, they just tweeted it out. Halloween Kills is wrapped. I'm so excited to see Jamie Lee Curtis, Laurie Strode again. I'm so excited for that. Like, I don't have a problem with these older women in my movies as well. But I just wish it was better. I really do. And I'm really disappointed in this because I was so looking forward to this movie. Yeah, what it comes down so. to is just tell better stories, people. You know, it doesn't matter who, like, what race, what ethnicity anybody is, right? Just tell good stories, and that will, the rest yeah. will take care of itself, right? To, to your point yeah. there, Brandon. But as for me, I'm going to give it two out of five time displacement units. So I just, it's better than Genesis, but 
I'll take all the rest of the Terminator movies over this one. This is, I mean, to come out and say, this is the true Terminator 3 for like the third time now. Like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> like you gotta, you gotta come out with something better than that. If that's going to be what you say. So I too enjoyed seeing Linda Hamilton back as Sarah Connor. Linda Hamilton, right? She, she kind of fell out of Hollywood after the the nineties. I mean, she did Dante's peak and like, I don't know what else after that did King Kong lives, by the way, I think I mentioned that before <laughs> on the podcast. So check that out. But great to see her back as Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor is one of my favorite characters, period. Arnold back again. I I think he didn't just show up for the paycheck. I think he did a really good performance. There was a lot of just layers to this character this time. Like, I, you know, he just wasn't played for laughs, like slapstick laughs, which I don't like. Mm -hmm. I mean, like Terminator 3, you know, I I didn't like the slapstick comedy for him there for the most part. Uh, Which I did. I thought that was good. Fair enough, fair enough. But, like, you know, in, in Genesis, like, hey, he's gonna smile, isn't it funny? Like, yeah. But here, mm-hmm. like him, him, his his deadpan delivery, like, also, this is Texas, <laughs> or you know, also. I'm extremely funny. Like, <laughs> these, <laughs> this good stuff. Yes, it's 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 a huge contrivance to keep bringing him back, but uh, it was good to see him again. There you go, right? I mean, we, yeah. we we've talked ad nauseum about the problems, the writing problems of this film. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's just a shame that everybody's like, well, I can't wait till James Cameron gets the Terminator rights back. Then he'll make the true Terminator 3. And here it was, right? I mean, you had Linda Hamilton and Arnold Schwarzenegger. You kind of had Edward Furlong. You you know, I understand his his life has always has its ups and downs and pits and valleys and all that kind of thing. But uh, I would have liked to see John Connor play a role in a Terminator movie, I guess, ultimately. Because yeah. he's the crux. And as we talked about earlier, they, they continue to try very odd things with him to the point now they have killed him off and removed him from the Terminator franchise and I think that's a big problem because even if they did make a sequel Brandon there would be no Arnold and there would be no John Connor and Sarah Connor's a great character but she's just you know one of an ensemble of this Terminator Mm -hmm. legacy and just to have her with all these new characters would feel odd so Mm -hmm. you know honestly Brandon I know you had high hopes this was about what I expected to be honest yeah, oh, that's. I was so looking forward to it because of the, <laughs> just the marketing. They got me with the marketing. I was like, I was on board, man. Those trailers really had me. I was so excited, and I don't know. I just, I was let down. I was let down. I'm very sad. So, I don't know. I just, I, I saw an article and I posted it on our Facebook page where Cameron's already talking about how he wants this one to continue, this storyline to continue. Nope. And at when I posted it, I'm like, yeah, let's do it. But, uh, you know, spoilers, I'll just ask it now. Is this franchise fatigued? And I'm going to say yes. This this franchise is 100% fatigued. When you remake Terminator 3, like, for the fourth time, <laughs> and it's still a mess, yeah. you have problems. Like, I don't get it. Speaking about sequels, right, This this also was planned to be the first of a trilogy just like every single Terminator <laughs> sequel since T3 has well been. it obviously was because the last shot well it's like oh you better be ready then and they just drive away yeah well right the domestic box office the US box office is opening weekend 29 million dollars now the budget of this film is that good or bad that is terrible know. because the okay. bud the budget of this film was on the ups of 185 million so mm. in order to break even Right, because you got to double the budget to include marketing. Right, in order to break even, you got to go like four hundred million dollars to break even, and this movie is not going to make it. You live or die by your opening weekend these days, right? Mm. And it it went under thirty million. Okay, like that's bad. <laughs> so, yeah. my theaters were empty for both showings. Yeah, you know what? If they, you know what they, if they make another Terminator. I won't be back. Yeah. Well, this truly is a dark fate for the Terminator franchise. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, Brandon, when you aren't uh, platonically raising uh, a family in a Texas forest, where can people find you? Oh, you can find me on Twitter at Brandon Metella. Uh, you can find me on the Phantom Podcast Network with my friends Chris and Tom. We've got a show called Good Evening, an Alfred Hitchcock podcast. And then you can find me over on Trek FM with a show called The Line, which is all about Star Trek Picard. That'll be coming out in January. I'm very excited for that. Zach, where can people find you when you're not uh, trying to fix your Terminator diabetes? Well, you can find me personally on Twitter at Moron Zach. That's M O O R E O N Z A C H. 
I'm also the host of my own podcast, Always Hold on the Smallville. We talk about each and every episode of that Young Superman show over there. You can find us on Twitter at Always Smallville with one S. And I'm also a host of Trek FM's original series podcast, Standard Orbit. We talk about all things old and new Captain Kirk and the Enterprise. And you can find us on Twitter at Trek FM. Well, that's all we've got for you this week. Uh, Before we go, we'd like to thank the executive producers of the network, Tony Robinson and Ken Tripp. Thank you so much. Uh, We'd like to thank the creator of our music, our theme song, Zach Tripp, uh, and his wonderful, wonderful theme song. If you'd like to give us a rating and review on uh, Apple iTunes or anywhere, we'd really appreciate it. It really does help people find the show. Uh, Please tweet and share our social media posts. And, uh, yeah, if you want to support us on Patreon, we got a Patreon as well. Uh, find us at patreon.com slash UFP Earth. We'll be back next week with our Terminator recap episode, followed by the week after that we're doing the Man With No Name series, which you might know as the Spaghetti Westerns with uh, Clint Eastwood. But we're going to start first with the original Yojimbo, directed by Akira Kurosawa, so be sure to check that one out. Um, so we're going to start there. We're, we got a very interesting little series of movies coming up uh, next for our next franchise. Uh, and Tom Elliott of the Twilight Zone podcast will be joining us for that. So that'll be in two weeks' time. But until then, we'll be back. Hasta la vista, baby. This has been a production of MTMR Media Works.